The ocean takes up 70% of the air, and over 80% of it is unexplored. What we do know, though, is that it's an ecosystem full of sea turtles, fish, algae, seaweed, and plastic. According to the Global Citizen, an estimated 8.3 billion tonnes of plastic has been made since the 1950s and only 9% has been recycled. This has left it to inhabit our oceans. Every day, litter washes up on the beach and 73% of this litter is plastic. This is Irvine Beach, a beach located in the town of Irvine. Like most beaches, it plays an important role in the community throughout the seasons. I come to Irvine Beach at least once, if not twice a week, for um, sea swimming. I swim in the sea, and the only other time I've been to Irvine Beach, I rode my horse. Although the beach is loved by many, plastic threatens the beach. Plastic washes up on every high tide, and that's twice a day. Unfortunately, it comes from the, the boats out in the water and coming down from both the River Garnock and the River Irvine. We think there's two, maybe three ways that plastic ends up in the beach. A lot of the plastic that we find has been dropped in towns and cities. It then gets into the water system and it comes down the river, either the, in this case the River Irvine and the River Garnock, and into the sea, and then it's washed up after that. On top of that, um, there's waste that comes in from the fishing industry, and uh, that's stuff like plastic gloves and bottles um, and drums, oil drums, and also nylon netting that comes in for the fishing industry. And thirdly, and probably the least amount of rubbish and plastic that we find is plastic is actually dropped in the beach. Uh, as far as it being disastrous as it is, it can be pretty disastrous to the marine life. Uh, we do get a lot of, uh, sort of seals getting washed up uh, who have sort of taken the, ingested the plastics. One example, and one that's got a lot of research in it at the moment, is those microplastics, those small microscopic plastics that we can't actually see with the naked eye, we need microscopes, and the problems that they are causing. We can see plastics, we can see large scale plastics, plastic bottles, plastic bags, and items and products like that, however, it's the microscopic plastics that are causing a serious amount of concern at the moment, along with those large scale plastics. One example of an issue with micro uh, plastics or, or small scale plastics is that they are got the same sort of characteristics as the sediment that they are surrounded by, so particles of sand for example, and because of that filter feeders such as species such as lugworm are actually taking these plastics in, taking them in and they're being absorbed into the body and then making its way up the food chain as that lugworm is consumed by a larger species and then that species is consumed by a larger species and it accumulates in the species as it goes up. Uh, if we continue to get a lot of plastics on the beach, we are going to get visitors sort of stopping coming, uh, so the beach won't get used to its full potential. And as I said, the marine life, it will be disturbed as well. So it's quite devastating to both, both sides. Thinking about social aspects as well, when you think of a beach, generally people think of a clean area, uh, golden sand, clear water, whereas these plastics and these debris uh, right from large scale to uh, microscopic scale plastics are covering our beaches. Um, it looks pretty disastrous, but there's people who are, who are committed to cleaning the beach at the moment, so it's not as bad as it could be, but it's still a worrying problem. One group that is helping to tackle the issue of plastic is Urban Cleanup Crew, a group of volunteers who meet on Sunday to pick up litter and plastic and put it in the bin. In 2018, they had filled 1,550 bags full of litter over 786 hours of volunteering. We, we started it when we, myself and my husband, went along to a beach clean that was organised in Troon, a bit by Friends of Troon Beaches, and it was at this side, and we were the only ones that turned up. So they said, here you go, you start one of these. So we did, and uh, it was very quiet to start with, we didn't get a lot of people coming out and then what happened was the David Attenborough Blue Planet documentary happened and we got loads of people coming out and plastic awareness just went sky high. So that's definitely been a, a big plus for the group is the amount of awareness that's been raised about plastic and about marine pollution. Well I volunteered because I was fed up seeing litter all over the place and so I just came along because it was annoying me so much I felt I had to do something and by coming along and working on the beach it highlighted for me that it wasn't just about 
people throwing litter down on the pavements, that it was a bigger problem than that altogether. So it's made me think much more about plastic use. Especially out on the beach and it's fun to clean up. Our mission is to make Edfin a better place to live, so at the moment it's about the beach and we want the beach to be absolutely pristine and a big draw for visitors to the town, but we also help in uh, parks and we, we help clean up um, areas of the town so that we are preventing plastics getting into the water system and also we're making Edfin look as beautiful a place as what it is. Well, the, the main way we're tackling plastic in the ocean is by lifting it off the beach and in the town and hopefully what we want to do is get more into the river banks as well. But us doing that is just really putting a stick in plaster in the problem. What we need to do is to raise awareness and for people to stop using plastic, particularly single-use plastics. We're still finding plastic forks, we're finding plastic ice cream spoons and there's just no reason for those to be getting used. So as a group we're going to look at raising awareness um, on the use of plastics and one way to do that is for people to come down and see the plastics lying on the beach. After you've done even half an hour of beach cleaning, you're going to go back to your house and think twice about single-use plastics because you've seen them lying on that beach, you know, you know the harm that they can be doing. I hope, it's going to, I hope people are going to start recycling more uh, and stop discarding plastics and the vessels are going to stop uh, from over the side. I'm hoping that the, the current legislation and policies of at least this country goes forward like they're doing, um, to be more environmentally aware, to make people recycle more um, and to make people just how much of an impact that the plastic pollution is making on the social side of the beaches and the marine ecosystem. I really hope in the future that, that plastic is discredited, it's not used in a way that asbestos is not used now. When, when I was young there was asbestos everywhere. Um, young people now are recognising that plastic is, is, is hazardous, not just to marine li life but also to humans. Um, plastic is leaching chemicals into foods um, and although the food industry says that plastic is needed to avoid waste, th there are long-term health risks with plastic as well. So I would love the future for there to be no plastic. So some of the methods that people can employ or use to try and minimise the amount of waste that's reaching the ocean um, or the amount of waste in general is being careful with what products you buy. Thinking about some simple methods of trying to change your behaviour, for example, if you buy bananas, buy bananas loose instead of buying bananas in a bag, for example, and then you're taking that demand for that plastic away and away from the waste stream and potentially making it into the water environment as well. Another key example as well is not using your toilet as a waste bin, not flushing products down the toilet that shouldn't be flushed down there and actually disposing them in the correct waste stream that they're supposed to be, for example, plastics, items. And another example as well, um, which is really interesting because it comes up quite a lot in um, my students' pieces of work where we do an environmental audit. They look at how they can minimise their waste and how they can reduce their waste, minimise and reduce and reuse their waste as well. Some really interesting examples are things like homemade soap, so you don't buy the plastic bottles instead, you don't buy products that are wrapped in plastic, you're making it completely from scratch. Other examples as well is using coffee grounds for um, face clean cleanser instead of using um, those that previously had microbeads in them as well. And we, we've actually had a couple of scientists down helping to clean the beach who are working on a solution, uh, a, an alternative to plastic based in seaweed and uh, crustaceans. So fingers crossed that that happens sooner rather than later. We must act fast. More plastic is making its way into the ocean every day. Let's choose to leave a different kind of footprint by helping keep our beaches and streets clean today.